What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, I want to do a little bit better explanation of method missing in Ruby. So yesterday, I did an episode where I was trying to do some metaprogramming stuff, and I think I got a little tripped up over some of the code actually, which sort of uh, makes sense when you're dealing with metaprogramming, it's easy to do. And I thought I would do a simpler explanation here just to make it more obvious what's going on with the method missing stuff in case I confused anybody yesterday. Before we get started, be sure to give the video a thumbs up at the end if you do like this video. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out this kind of content every day. And I don't want you to miss out on anything. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into doing a little bit of coding directly in IRB, and then we'll crack open a file here in a couple of minutes and get some uh, a little bit, a little bit more in-depth stuff going. All right, so first of all, let's open up IRB, and I'm going to create a kind of a placeholder class. My go-to is just dog. It's not going to have any methods on here, and let's try. Let's create a new dog dog is dog.new and let's try to call a method on it so let's call dog.bark and we're going to get this no method error undefined method bark for dog now this obviously is a very common error if you've done any ruby programming at all you've seen this probably all the time you've probably seen a lot of undefined method something for nil class that's a very common one um, something like uh, nil.bark, undefined method bark for nil class. So I'm going to clear my screen and call dog.bark again just so we have that here. So what you may not know is that whenever you try to call a method on an object that where the method does not exist, what happens internally in the object is there's a method that gets run called method missing. And by default, method missing method missing, excuse me, raises this no method error. So this is the output of method missing. And so we can try to call method missing. So we could try to say like dog dot method, method missing. And we're going to get this error that there's a private method that we're trying to call. So you can't normally explicitly call that. So in Ruby, there's sort of a hack that you can do to call private methods. I uh, some people do this all the time. Some people don't do it. I don't really do it very much, but you can do this. Uh, you can say dog.send, and this is actually going to call the private method. So you can send this message, method, method, missing, and then we can pass it the message we want to send. And so now you're going to get the same exact error that you get above, which is undefined method bark called for dog. Okay, so let's play with this a little bit more. So I'm going to clear my screen here. And um, what we can do is let's open up that dog class again. And let's write a method method missing. Um, method missing, it's going to take the name of the method that uh, it's trying to call. And we can give it the splat operator with some args. I think you can also do a block probably, but we're not going to worry about that here. And then instead of raising an error, I'm just going to say puts uh, method um, name called with, and then we'll just do args like that, and end, and end. So then we do dog equals dog.new, and then we can do dog.asdf. And we basically get method ASDF, ASDF called with an empty array. We can say um, hello uh, there and the number nine. And you get method hello called with there and the number nine. So um, that's basically how the method missing works. So now if we call any method that doesn't exist, um, it's going to be passed along to method missing. So but I want to illustrate that if you call a method that does exist, it, it doesn't do that. And I think that's kind of obvious, but I just want to make sure that I show it. So like if we do, you can define a method directly on an object. So this is also kind of a weird thing that you can do in Ruby. But I'm, instead of opening up the class, I can actually just define a method on this dog. So I can say def dog dot uh, bark. And then we can say uh, puts rough. 
like that. And then if I say dog dot bark, I get rough and then you know anything else is going to trigger that method missing method. Okay, so I got a couple more steps here and it's gonna get to a more solid point. So I'm gonna suggest that if you watch this, if you were confused at all yesterday by the episode, which is totally understandable, I was slightly confused. Watch this and then go back and watch that again. It might be a little bit frustrating because uh, it goes in circles and stuff, but uh, it kind of, it'll make more sense. So with that said, let's open up this dog class one more time. And I wanna do something, it's gonna, we're gonna also gonna define, well, let's start with defining a constant or a, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna create a constant and it's gonna have some symbols in it. And so it's gonna be like bark, walk, run, eat, and maybe that's good enough. And then we'll do a method missing. And same thing, so it'll be name and splat args. And what we're gonna do is say, um, unless, so if um, name, let's say actions dot any, and then we'll give this a block here, action, and then we'll say action equals name dot to sim, like this. So basically we're saying if any of the actions match this method name, um, we'll say uh, puts and then uh, calling, uh, this is really not a big deal how what we say here, but executing and then we'll say uh, name with and do args like that. Else super. Okay. Um, let's see if we did that right. This is about as much as I'm going to do directly in the terminal. I need to do this in a text editor so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. Um, but let's try this. So if we do dog equals dog dot new. And then we do dog dot bark, executing bark with an empty array. Put a string in there, okay. And then if I do dog dot asdf, I'm gonna get an undefined method asdf. So now what we're basically doing is saying, hey, we know that there's people who are gonna call these methods on this object, and we're gonna provide some sort of nice behavior for it. But if somebody tries to call something that we don't know about, let's just treat it as as we would always treat it. it it's gonna raise a no method error because we just don't know what it is. So sticking with the dog example, let's go to an actual file over here which I've already set up, dog.rb, and I'm gonna create a class dog, um, and we're gonna like kind of map out what a more realistic example would look like. So this is kind of how you're actually sort of expected to do this most of the time in a professional setting. So um, if we do something like actions equals bark, and again, this is, I say professional setting, but this is obviously still a very simplistic example. Bark, walk, run, eat. Um, and then we can define our method missing again. And let's say uh, we're going to take a name and splat args. And then in here, what I want to do is say... Um, Let's see, so we basically want to just put, um, and then we'll say um, name called with args. I'm also going to do one thing really quick here. I'm going to set up a rake file. So I published a video this morning um, on uh, how to basically reload the, the console. So check that out. I'm just gonna paste this here. We're gonna load dog. And we just need to change this to be the name of the folder we're in right now, which is missing. Um, and let's give this a, let's give this a shot. So um, let's check on everything really quick. I had a question mark right here and I just realized it and took that away. We don't need a question mark. Okay, so let's go over here and run a rake console. And uh, we should be able to now do dog equals dog.new and dog.bark. Bark called with an empty array, so no arguments, and then ASDF with a string ASDF. Okay, so 
what I want to do is take a look at um, the, this method here. So, like if let's first of all let's just do um, well let's do this. Let's define one method over here. Um, hello, and then just puts hello. So if we reload now um, and we dog is dog dot new dog dot hello. So I can actually introspect this object and say dog dot responds to hello. And um, that's not the method. <laughs> Respond, I think there's no S. There we go. So that's the method. Dog dot respond to hello is true. And if we try that with something like bark, we're going to get false, even though we are wanting it to respond to bark. So the reason that this is important is, first of all, introspection is a big deal in developing in Ruby. And so some other developer is going to come along in the future and be looking at your object and trying to figure out what all it does. And you want your object to tell the truth. So if you have an object that responds to a handful of extra methods that aren't defined, so they're called what you might call like a ghost method, um, I think that's what they call it in the metaprogramming Ruby book, uh, which I highly recommend. Um, if, if you are responding to just a handful of methods, you would like it to return true for those and then false for everything else. If you're developing an object that is really like a magical object that will respond to any method you throw at it, you basically want it to always return true um, or something like that. So. We need to actually teach our object how to uh, to respond, and we can do that over here. So we're going to write a new method, and again, this is a built-in method that we're overriding. So we're going to say def uh, respond to missing, and this time we do need a question mark. Um, and we'll say uh, name, and I think it takes a second. So this is include private equals false. So this is basically, uh, again, we're, we're overriding a built-in method, and this is just what it is. Um, so what we're going to do in here is basically say, um, under what circumstances do we respond to missing? Or how do we uh, respond in the event that someone asks us whether or not we respond to a method? So um, it's kind of complicated, um, but I think it'll make sense once we walk through it. So essentially what we're going to do is what we did in our if statement while we were over in IRB. So I'm just going to say actions.any, and then we're going to check each of these actions. So action, and then we'll say uh, action equals equals um, name.toSim. So that's going to return true or false. So do any of does the method that's being called match any of the actions that we have available up here? So if that turns out to be true, we want to say, yes, we do respond to this method. Otherwise, let's just call super, not soupser, super. OK, then over here, let's, uh, I'm going to clear and reload. I'm really loving all the tips you guys are giving me. Um, so now let's do dog equals dog.new, and we'll say dog.respond to, and then we'll check like walk, and it's true now. Um, if we check ASDF, it's false. Okay, so the last little bit that we want to do, because this is cool, um, but it's actually still not quite right, because if we do dog.asdf, it actually does respond to ASDF. So what we need to do to make this really fully complete is basically say super unless respond to name. Okay, and let's reload one more time dog equals dog.new and then dog.asdf we're going to get an undefined method error um, and then if we do dog.walk we're going to get our method being called so this is pretty cool um, this may feel a little contrived and it, it is um, and the methods aren't really doing anything um, like I was saying you know what we did in the uh, episode yesterday is a slightly more realistic example. Um, you know, one of the things we could do, and uh, I'll just kind of, from that's basically the episode up till here, but just to kind of play around with it a little more, uh, we could do something like uh, class 
a living thing or like a, a living mechanism me mechanics I don't know what do you call these things bark walk activities activities I don't know it doesn't even matter let's just do like then we'll do our eigenclass and um, we can come in here now we can say like uh, def walk um, run and just leave it at that and then we can just uh, puts walking puts running you'll see where we're going with this in just a second so what we can actually do is say and um, I'm gonna get rid of this actions here and now what we can do is say respond to missing and we'll say activities respond to name okay and then here we're actually going to activities send name like this so we'll reload dog equals dog dot new dog dot run uh, dog dot walk dog dot eat and we're gonna get an undefined method eat so this is what I was kinda doing this is analogous to what I was doing yesterday because um, I have multiple classes using the same thing and I wanted them to all dynamically pick up uh, the behavior as we change it so now if I come in here and I say dog uh, or no so if I do def ASDF and then uh, uh, puts just typing stuff so now if I come over here and I reload and I'm going to clear that as well oh hit the wrong thing um, rake console and I hit the wrong button let me try it again and then we'll do dog equals dog dot new dog dot asdf so you know this is kind of cool um, if you had other classes that were consuming this activities in this way you could just add stuff to the activities and it'd show up it's sort of like uh, creating a like a faux super class in a way um, in this specific context um, that's not exactly what was happening yesterday with the uh, the the library that I've been kind of working on for data analysis so anyway um, this is all kind of interesting stuff it's kind of like it's a mental exercise in some ways. It can be very practical in some situations, but it's not a hammer for every nail, basically. Uh, so I really enjoy it, but you know, I don't actually use it all that much in like production code. So um, definitely check out the metaprogramming Ruby book, though. They go through some practical cases that do use it, and it's pretty interesting. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as always, and I will talk to you in the next episode.